Hey guys, the Network Berg here. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, we'll be discussing VPLS uh, on a Mikrotik router. So VPLS sounds quite a lot like MPLS, and there is a reason for it. It makes use of MPLS in order to create these virtual um, links, these tunnels that you can send through raw Ethernet frames, as well as things like VLAN information. So you could effectively think of this as a very long Ethernet cable that you can run between two locations to span a subnet or a VLAN. Um, ISPs make use of this quite a bit. They sometimes use it to span data center ranges across various sites um, so that they can use the same IP range at all of these data centers, but over a big MPLS network. So if one of the data centers was to suffer an outage, everything would still go on. Nobody would realize there's an outage even happening. Um, so I've got a topology set up here. It's the same topology we've been using for our OSPS set setup and our MPLS setup. So now we're going to set up VPLS over this MPLS link. So I've added a scenario here. There's a CE1 and CE2. You can think of this as customer equipment. And this client wants to just span a LAN range between these two routers. They don't want to get internet or layer three through us. They just want these two sites to be able to communicate directly with each other. So we're gonna assist them by giving them VPLS. Now the VPLS, we won't configure on the customer equipment. We actually configure that on our provider edge. So that will be on our routers that is running MPLS and OSPF at the moment in order to create these tunnels. So in our topology, we're actually going to create the VPLS tunnel from PE3 to PE5. That will be our objective. So I'm going to show you how to do this in the command line and in Winbox. So let's begin. I'm going to log into PE3. The first thing I'm going to do is add a bridge. I'm just going to interface bridge, add, call the bridge uh, VPLS tunnel. I'm going to create the VPLS interface now. So interface, VPLS, and we're going to add an interface. We're going to name it VPLS ton to PE5. Or let, let's, let's call it the CEs, just so that it gives you better visibility. So to CE2. Uh, it's going to ask us for a remote peer. Our remote peer is going to be 5.5.5.5. And that is a loopback address on the OSPF for PE5. And we need to add the VPLS ID as well. So let, let's just add these values from here and the VPLS ID. So the ID is, is similar to the EOIP tunnel ID that I've made a video on before. Um, this is just going to be something to identify this tunnel with on your network. So generally what people like to do is use their autonomous system number that they get from some IP register, registrar and followed by whatever tunnel it is. But we can just use one colon one for this and that's it. There's one more thing I want to change though because on the Mikrotix, when you add a VPLS tunnel, through the command line, it actually disables the interface. So let's just fix that interface VPLS enable zero. Great. So the interface is going to be connected now. Um, well, it's not going to connect to the remote site yet. So it's not really going to do anything, but we'll fix that up in a sec. Before we continue, we just want to add this uh, VPLS tunnel into the bridge that we created earlier as well as Ethernet 2, which will be running to the customer equipment. So to do that, we'll go into the interface, bridge, port, add, interface. So we'll be adding our VPLS tunnel to CE2. And the bridge is going to be VPLS tunnel. And then we just want to add our Ether2 interface, because that's going to be running to the CE1, Ether2. Great, that's it. That's effectively the setup on PE3. It's done, it's dusted. We just need to set it up on PE5 now. So this I'll quickly do via Winbox. I've got it open on Winbox already on its management IP. So I'm just going to jump into the MPLS setting and I'm going to go into VPLS. 
So inside VPLS, we just click on the plus. So as we were doing in the command line, we can just give it a name. So this is going to be VPLS tunnel to CE1. We need to set the remote peer. So that is going to be 4.4.4.4. .4 .4 .4. And we need to specify the ID. So that's one colon one. Apply it. And we should actually see this tunnel come online. There we go, it's receiving signals. So let us create our bridge quickly. So our bridge is going to just be VPLS underscore bridge. And then we can add our ports. And our ports was VPLS tunnel to CE1 and also Ether2. And that's it. The VPLS tunnel between the two PEs are, is set up now. So all that's left for us to do is actually test it and see if it's working. And that we can do by logging into the routers of the customer equipment. So I'm gonna go back into GNS3. I'm going to go into CE1. And I'm gonna go into CE2. So inside CE1, config T, interface GI00, IP address 192.168, let's give it dot .20.1 dot with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And let's sh no shut the interface in case it's shut down. Let's jump into CE2. Show IP in brief, I just want to see. Okay, config T int GI00. No shut. IP address 192.168.20.2. Hit enter. I'll quickly save the config on both routers. And let's see if we can ping across. So I'm going to try and ping from CE1 to CE2. Ping 192.168.20.1.2 is CE2. And we've got packets traversing over our VPLS tunnel to the other end. So effectively, we've bridged these two remote sites. The customer can do whatever they want. They can use whatever IPs they want or VLANs they want and treat this as their own internal network between two remote locations. That is the emphasis. That is going to conclude this video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please, I do encourage you to do so. Also, a like also helps out quite a bit. I do appreciate everybody that has subscribed so far. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. I wish you all the best with your learning experience. Thanks. Bye.